justice for all. What I'm going to do is, at the one minute mark, whoever's going to speak, I'm just going to put this finger up. And you'll know that's about like a 30 second, uh, one minute to 30 second. Well, well let's do one minute. Um, and we're going to cut you right off when it's three minutes. So um, don't be offended at that. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So the first one, step up to the microphone, is Lynn Roman. Will this reduction in human beings 
being mentored for it, and examples of kindness, caring, and compassion help students build their reserves of self-control, integrity, and empathy. It has been proven that young students need to be taught how to build their emotional ability, or has that been disregarded due to the budget cuts? If cuts have to be made, have you thought about cutting positions outside of those in direct contact with students? Why not form a committee of retired teachers and teachers currently working and ask for their input before making decisions that affect students? I believe this. I believe this committee will give you valuable information concerning what works and what does not. Respectfully submitted by Deborah Hawking. found several articles and studies that have been released in recent years, as recently as last month, addressing this topic. I've included links to the specific articles and studies in the handout I prepared for you, and I want to highlight some things that stood out to me because I see the connection to Danbury. In the AFT October 2017 Educator Quality of Work Life Survey, more than half the educators surveyed point out their mental health is an issue. 58% said their mental health was not good for seven or more of the previous 30 days. A similar survey in 2015 found just 34% of respondents felt the same way. I speculate Danbury would have similar statistics. 40% of respondents reported having no influence or only minor influence in establishing curriculum at their schools. I can relate to that because the classroom teachers I've spoken with don't feel like they're included in the decision-making process. To be honest, if left to classroom teachers, we may have chosen different reading and writing programs. Currently, each lesson requires 10 pages of reading to prepare for just one lesson. Teachers probably would have asked for something more similar to our new math program, which takes far less time to prep for. In Danbury, we have our day broken down minute by minute as to how much time to spend on each subject. I haven't met a teacher yet who can honestly say they are able to stick to it every day. I know we all try, and I feel terribly awful for the teachers who come into our district thinking this is a realistic expectation and quickly feel like a failure. All of these articles share a common theme, that stress contributes to teacher turnover, a problem we've seen in Danbury in the past few years. If you're wondering if I'm just here to moan, groan, and complain, the answer is no. I'm asking this board and administration to form an ad hoc committee I'd imagine in cooperation with the applicable unions, composed primarily of classroom teachers, building administrators, board members, and parents to study the quality of work life here in Danbury and make recommendations to improve the quality of our work life, which as we all know, impacts the learning conditions for students. Danbury has a unique opportunity to get out ahead of this issue to be a model for districts across the state and even across the country to address the very real issues confronting us. Some districts are starting to do this. Let's do this together. As educators, we work hard to make our classrooms caring and supportive environments. We need to do the same for our teachers. Thank you. 
occasion, approve the items on the consent calendar, Exhibit 17-126 through 17-127, as recommended. Second. Second by Mr. Ferguson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Boy, you represent Spotlighter School, Great Plain Elementary School. All right. Come on up. <laughs>
to be here tonight knowing that this is where the snow days get called from. <laughs> They're very thrilled. So Dr. Sale, good job getting here on snow days and calling us to let us know. I'd like to explain in a few words how the PTO supports Great Plain. Our PTO board is somewhat like a family. We've always operated with our board and lots of parents who are just willing to help whenever we need any anything extra. Um, each room has benefited from supplies that we've been able to raise money for that have helped to enrich the children's learning experience. We help to pay for um, field trips so that it doesn't cost the parents as much money as it normally would. And we get science supplies, safe playground equipment for our children, and the online resources that just help with reading and math and everything else that they need. The PTO parents are informed by the school in reference to the curriculum, testing, student records, and internet safety during PTO meetings. Curriculum night and grade level meetings help for parents during the school year as well. We're proud of the partnership that we have with our school and value our continuous involvement with our children's academic, social, and emotional learning. 
We appreciate how the school responds to our input and our community needs. Thank you. saw in terms of uh, student achievement. Um, I walked in there a number of times and listened and um, I was impressed with the kind of work that was going on. At the end of the day, when we collected the data, uh, they were one of the highest scoring schools in the district in terms of students. So I say thank you, the kids say thank you for the hard work because it took a lot to get there. Uh, you guys were relentless at it and um, you did good work, you did hard work and um, leadership of Keisha and the rest is really appreciated. Uh, so thank you very much, and thank you for coming here. Thank you. Uh, Sam. Sorry, yeah. let me get out your way. You guys have more to say? It's okay. You guys are welcome to stay home. Great 
came in second at state opens, and we have two girls going to New England. ELL College Night is being held tonight to support and provide aid to families regarding financial aid and college applications. Our administrators are working with Impact Sports to create a new Hatter logo that will be brought forward school-wide. We have had great success with our student feedback. Over 1,000 students have replied to our surveys. We are striving to becoming more unified and less institutional school. Construction in the front of the building should be completed within a week or two. They are in the process of installing a new glass. Uh, the Black Box Theater attached to A-Wing and the Freshman Academy are both on schedule. They have bricked the Freshman Academy and are beginning to close up and get ready for winter. Speaking of, the kids at DHS are pretty cool, but lately we've been a whole lot cooler. <laughs> um, we hope that winter won't hit us too hard this year. <laughs> However, we have had a great quarter and we look forward to the next one. Lastly, we said at the beginning of the year that as members of the BOG, we would update you on the initiatives that we like to consider, making Danbury High School a community that cares. This month, we have worked on getting school-wide involvement in, rec in recognizing our veterans. So far, we have asked advisors to participate in one of the following activities. To partake in a door decorating competition in which they will creatively design the door to their advisory in a way that uniquely showcases their gratitude to veterans, <coughs> or to collect a variety of different donations into boxes that we'll, we will be sending to a base station in Iraq whom we have been in contact with. Mm -hmm. Additionally, tomorrow we will have an advisory ceremony with our chorus singing the national anthem, Mr. Donovan recognizing veterans among our staff, and the ROTC program reciting the honorary poem. We also have three Quest veterans who will be in the cafeteria during lunch periods to answer respectful questions for students to simply express their gratitude. So far, we have gotten a great amount of student involvement in these veterans' activities, and we plan <laughs> on updating you about them at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we think they fixed the heat. I'm sorry? We think they fixed the heat for tomorrow. <laughs> for <hope>. <laughs> <laughs> Roy, you probably would spend some time talking a little bit about the DECO program, the uh, early college opportunity. This is our third year, our three quarters. Um, there are only four districts in the state that um, actually participate in this program. The uh, governor uh, had put an incentive out a few years ago, and along with the AP movement that we had at the high school, we thought we needed a middle college opportunity for students that wanted to uh, accrue more credits and also get a, a vocational pathway. So when they left high school, they would have either a career institute or they could go on to a four to year college. This came along, we participated in it. Uh, the funding dried up, so we've been funding it through our alliance money and there was an initial grant uh, doing it, but um, <coughs> the success of the youngsters is just unbelievable. We just had a program where we recognized the students and I think, um, I'd like, where is Dr. Roy? We just got a doctor that's going to kind of talk about it. Um, we're just so proud of the program. Great. Roy. So while we're at this, you know, thank you. Okay. Um, so I brought a couple of students with me this evening, and I just want to recognize one of our workplace learning teachers because she's got a head out. But um, Patricia Kluva is in the back there. 
Um, she teaches our Workplace Learning 1 and Workplace Learning 2 courses this year. She's new to us um, on our DECO team. So uh, it's always exciting to have new people to be able to advocate for us, especially people that are in the system that know um, what we're doing up at the high school level. She can speak to parents who are at middle school level and elementary and help them understand what we have going on. So today we have um, Alex and Francis Sanchez with us and Ian Robinson, who are three of our DECO students. So they're happy to answer questions for you um, about what they're doing and the types of courses that they're taking. Three, they are three of the students that, as Dr. Sal um, mentioned, um, that were recognized last month um, for having 21 or more college credits already. Now they're juniors in high, high school, so they're just starting junior year. So they have more than 21 credits at the college, and they also have GPAs of 3.5 or better in their college courses. Also in the HS So we also, uh, at that ceremony, we also recognize uh, Michael Campisi, who falls into that same category. And we recognize three of our young ladies who, after three years at DHS, have decided that with these opportunities, they are going to graduate a year early. And so that's very exciting to them. Um, they're not sure what they're going to do yet, all of them. Uh, some of them, one of them is thinking of pursuing the associate's degree in Nagata, finishing that up. And then the other two are planning on going to four-year university, just not sure where they're going yet. So, um, look at Jesse, you're going to help me out. So basically, this is just our DECO mission statement, preparing students to excel in high school, uh, college, career, and beyond. And like I said, the backbone of the DECO program is our workplace learning courses. We have three courses that the students take. Um, in the workplace learning <coughs> one, they're really learning about themselves, how they function, um, basic soft skills, how to conduct themselves when interacting with adults um, during meetings, how to dress, those kinds of things. Um, in Workplace Learning 2, they're learning how to function on teams and interact with each other to come up with products in different, uh, different um, situations, be it in school or during job interviews, those kinds of things. Workplace Learning 3, they're honing their skills and they are actually going out and soliciting internships. So that's our next step that we're really working on with the community. Uh, you can hit the next slide. That's fine. Um, and some of our staff. But our next step is looking for internships for our students out in the community. So I'm working with the Danbury Schools and Business Collaborative to kind of get the word out there. These internships are going to highlight the skills that the students have. So our students come with a variety of different skills. Primarily, they're working in computer information sciences. So some of them are taking database design. Some of them are doing networking, programming, all kinds of different computer skills that they're going to bring out into Danbury's community. So currently, we have three students who are going to begin their internship as early as next week. Um, they will be working with a local sticker company. It's called Icons LLC. And they're going to be creating sticker books that could be used at elementary schools or middle schools that highlight historical figures. And they'll be doing the, from researching the backgrounds of those figures who decide who they want to put in the books, creating the um, art that's going to be in there, and then uh, laying out the whole design of the book. So they're really going to be instrumental in those things. So what we have been doing in uh, 2017-18, so far this summer we welcomed our third cohort at Westside Academy for our summer orientation program. You can see some of our students there. Um, we have about 70 students or so in our third cohort, and uh, it's a nice demographic. They mirror what we have as our overall demographic of our freshmen pretty closely. So we look forward to seeing how they uh, perform this year. Um, like we said, we celebrated seven of our students, and uh, we welcomed uh, the president of Mount Jeff Valley Community College to come and celebrate with us as long as, as well as our industry partners. We also uh, had our first meet and greet meeting. So part of our workplace learning um, class is a mentoring component. It's online. It's hosted by IBM called <coughs> Mentor Place. And we pull our mentors from the community, primarily from Pitney Bowes and New Oak, which are two local um, corporations here, and the students work with their mentors three times a year in person. The rest of the time they're working online, and we're always looking for new mentors, so if anybody's interested in mentoring, um, please reach out to me, and I'm happy to include you as one of our online mentors. 
So here are some of the courses that our DECO students are currently taking. At DHS, we offer Intro to Digital Arts and Digital Imaging through a College Career Pathways program. Um, it's a dual enrollment program, so they, this teacher has been vetted by Navtech Valley Community College, so the students are able to receive college credits as well as high school credits during their school day. We also bring in um, NBCC professors to school to teach our Intro to Computers class and also Programming 1 and Database Design this semester. Next semester we'll be offering, again, Intro to Computers and, and some more uh, classes during the school day. After school, we in the past we've offered Intro to Business and Intro to Public Speaking. We did not offer one this fall, but we are hoping to be able to offer one in the spring um, as long as we have enough students who are able to participate. Uh, we also have brought in Navitech Valley Community College advisors so that our students can sit down one-on-one -on -one with their parents and the advisor to discuss where they want to go and how they can use this program to help them. So some of them will be finishing their associate's degree uh, next year in computer information sciences, and some of them will be finishing their associate's degree in general studies. Um, they've decided that maybe the computer courses aren't going to be the pathway that they want, or maybe they do want to study computer sciences. It doesn't make sense for them to necessarily take those courses at NBCC if they won't transfer to a four-year university. So they'll finish in the general studies and then pursue the computer um, classes at a later date. Um, the 77 meetings that NBCC is facilitating for us. Um, and it's an important step because the students are learning um, exactly where they're going and how much money they save, which is huge. <laughs> the parents are happy about that. Um, and also just the achievement that they've, that they've shown so far. Uh, again, I mentioned our Workplace Learning. Workplace Learning 3 is a new course to us this year. In this course, we're really trying to um, help students learn how to navigate the work the workplace, um, they're working on creating resumes and portfolios. Many of our students have secured their first jobs and they come back and they report, Miss, can you believe that the student, that this other person wore that outfit to an interview? And they, they, they feel a little very prepared. And so um, it's, it's a testament to the, to the work that they're doing, their workplace learning uh, classes and to the teachers in there. They're also learning how to read their paychecks and conduct personal finance uh, matters, which is, uh, something that we're having for all of our students coming very soon in Connecticut. Um, right now our students in Workplace Learning 3 are conducting interviews with volunteers from the community who have come in to interview them. They have a rubric that they're using and it's helping um, our students practice and get ready to uh, go out on those first interviews. And the last thing that they're doing is they're working on literature circles. If you see the titles of the books that they're doing, Five Dysfunctions of the Team, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Drive, Mindset, Workplace Wisdom, 101. These are all great books that are going to help them be successful. And they're working um, in teams, which is one of our goals at Denver High School this year, to help students learn in small groups. And so this is an exciting um, exciting books for them to be able to really uh, see that we're not just making this stuff up, this is really what happens out in um, the work world. Our internships are six to eight week projects, about five hours a week or so, um, and again, it's implementing all of those skills. So we're looking for businesses. So far, we have commitments from Ingersoll Auto, from Icons LLC, we'll have some internships right at Danbury High School, Danbury Schools and Business Collaborative, um, and then again, some other local businesses that we're speaking to. I'd like to just say if you have any questions, if you want to hear from our students, um, they're happy to answer any questions for you. If you'd like to email me, uh, my information is there. Any questions? So I'd like to hear from the students. Kind of, you know, your thoughts of the program, kind of growth of the program, and what direction we could possibly take it in the future. Sorry, put you on the spot. Yeah. Um, Hello? So, I really enjoy the program, and I think it's really helping me with um, credits and giving me the opportunity to take college classes. I think, uh, with regarding the path <coughs> that we should take, I think we're doing fine. Maybe just 
more college classes because we need to get 60 credits and so far it seems like there's a lot to do left. But I think we'll be able to finish it. Anyone else want to jump in on that? <laughs> How do you find your work in terms of difference with the college? Well, is it okay? <laughs> well, with the college work, it's definitely more work, but it's not like undoable. It's if, if you put your mind to it, like, try and focus your efforts on the class. Yeah, but it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a lot of work. You really have to be driven to finish this work, and you have to focus on your studies. And we're sort of giving up our usual high school experience in order to get one step farther in our education. And we thank you guys for that. So I actually have a question. So. You mentioned 21 credits, so how many credits will you get? Because originally the program was to, to have the two-year the associate's degree done in the four-year period of your year. Four. Four. <coughs> yeah. So they can well, take... Four, four in, in, in school and one possibly out, right? Four, five, or six years, so depends. Yep. Mm -hmm. So these guys are a little bit ahead of schedule. They're doing well. Um, Again, we offer classes during the day, so they've utilized that. We also offer classes during the summer. They've also attended those. Um, they also opted to, I know Francis is taking um, class after school again this time. They're <coughs> the spot. They can take it during the day with our programming one class, but saw that there was no good spot in uh, one offered at the Main Street campus, so we have those options too. That's going to be an option again for, um, for the spring. So we try to give as many opportunities as we can, but again, we need enough interest from the students to be able to, to right. offer as many as we can. So we're plugging for it, and um, they can be expensive as well. Right. So you guys are all juniors now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they're on track to do? They're technically seniors, oh, um, okay. <laughs> because they have so many credits. Okay. But they are, they are in their third year, they're juniors. Um, and so, yes, they are on track to finish. Um, it will be a push in the end. The way that we're also able to do it is by utilizing some of the courses that we already offer in the library. So our advanced placement English courses, our AP Psych, our AP Stats, those are things that they can also take that not be took um, as, as long as they perform well on the test at the end of the year, um, then they can also get credits for that. Dr. Wright, what is the uh, enthusiasm for potential students wanting to get into the program? I mean, has it been successfully at New World it out a few years ago? Mm -hmm. Has it followed with much of the enthusiasm currently? Sure, so we started originally with 100 students, um, actually 99 because one decided to go to have um, to out of tech. So we started with 99, and in their cohort right now we have 77 <coughs> students. Um, if you, Several were replaced because of uh, special education needs or programming needs um, out of the program, or some students had moved um, out of district, or uh, we had just a small handful who opted not to do it anymore. Like um, they mentioned, it is a commitment on their part, um, and it can be difficult. Um, but I forgot what the original question was. The enthusiasm. The enthusiasm, okay, sorry. So the, um, Moving forward, we have in our second cohort, 67 students, and then again in our third cohort, cohorts, a little bit over 70 right now. And so that seems to be a more manageable number for us, um, section-wise. 60 is a good number because then we can have two classes. It makes it a little bit easier um, for us to navigate at the high school. But there, I, I receive emails on a weekly basis from parents in the community who are interested in this program and want to participate in the program. Um, but we do have to limit the numbers based on our uh, availability and resources. Other than you might want to use the mic, otherwise someone's going to come. I'm sorry. Right next to you. Does it work? Other than the fit me bows and, and uh, the other company, who will, what, you will, what, uh, other business communities in Denver, in the greater Denver area, would you recommend or would you hope for to participate in your uh, in your program 
and also have you given any thoughts as to how we can go about and encourage those companies to, to know more about your program and to possibly join up? Sure, so we are actively working with the Danbury Schools and Business Collaborative, the Chamber of Commerce, um, to be able to get the word out there about that, though, especially in the, in the capacity of internships. Um, we've also had some success with interactions with Max Air. We took a field trip for them um, before the students were able to learn about different job opportunities that they have here locally and globally. So those are some other things that we're, we're looking to do. Um, we do, I, I've attended some of the small business um, meetings as well. So just getting the word out there. We also have um, a booth set up um, with Danbury Schools and Business Collaborative uh, over at Eben Allen's doing a showcase um, coming up soon. So we'll get the word out there too. Thank you. Any other questions? We are, um, one of our strategies, we're meeting, I think, Monday, next Monday, mm -hmm. group. we're trying to get a company to adopt a course. Uh, we think that's doable that way. If we can get, the more we can get some companies, you guys can go with me and help me recruit too. Mm -hmm. Get us, get some companies, say, I'll, I'll sponsor a course. Our original plan was to see if we could, um, we'd get about seven or eight companies donating money because the state backed away from it. And we haven't been successful with that, so we're going to try this other uh, program. So we're starting on that. I met with the uh, superintendents from New London, which is the other, Wyndham, and Norwalk. And I got to tell you, we're far ahead in terms of what we're doing. They keep asking about what you're doing, how you're doing. I don't know how. So we're doing well in terms of listening and keeping the answers. You know, some years back, you did away as a board with your leveling of courses, right? And we were somewhat concerned about what that was going to do. We're finding our kids in the AP and these programs at two years out, and I've mentioned this to all of you before, that we actually have a 70% retention rate for kids that choose to go to college the second year out. Normally, the first year, the third or third drops out. Our kids at Denver High School. Uh, are going and staying, 70% of them are signing up for a second year if they, if they decide to go into a program. I think these youngsters have a career pathway and an understand, and the, the, the most <coughs> success you can have in college is taking college courses, doing the very thing you said, knowing how to organize your time, figuring out what the, what the professor wants, and delivering that, and, and understanding it, and being able to work through those courses. Uh, I think it's all beginning to come together that way, through a lot of hard work. The disappointment we're having is the uh, certification for Naugatuck, uh, we thought we'd have more of our own faculty teaching, but because this new certification, they removed them from the option. We're even lucky to have the one or two there. We thought we'd have a lot more. So our strategy is to, to keep offering things, and, and when we go up to Hartford and they say, why does Danbury need money? Well, you heard the introduction before, <coughs> the reduction. The other thing that happens to our youngsters we take programs away from them. We give them something, we take it away. And I kept saying, we don't sustain programs. And that's really unfair. And we've been able to keep this because of the alliance and a lot of work Joe has been done in cobbling together some resources. So we're, we're mindful of trying to keep the program. We'd like to offer more, but it's a matter of resources, uh, quite frankly. But if we can get some companies to adopt the course, that'll just put us in a better position uh, to offer more courses for these youngsters. So. Thank you for the work that you're doing. I'm really proud of all of you, and especially the students. So just, you know, people, are they really going to do it? Well, yeah, you really are going to do it. And you can do it, so that's terrific. Thank you very much. No more regional calendar. So there's no more. No. What we did, remember last year, 
we talked about trying to utilize some commemorative days. And right. So we, we tried to incorporate that here and also starting after Labor Day was a good thing. So re the original calendar is a recommendation. This does line up with, I believe, the major um, uh, uh, the springtime, right, Bill? Yes. That we did. We, we, we okay. did that before there was a regional calendar anyway, because the families are affected by both. Good. Anything else on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay. Um, budget update. Joe, do you want to start with that? As we all know, the state has now adopted a budget. We are flat for ECS funding. The only cut we do see, which has not been officially announced at the, at the uh, city level, will be our priority grant. There's a, it looks like a 10% some odd reduction in that grant, which could be around $200,000 to $300,000 that we think right there. Um, there's some other things we're finding out as we go. Um, late this afternoon, we were told even funding was part of our best program for teacher um, induction. induction. There was a, there was a stipend that was paid for by the state for five hundred dollars for what was it for us? Our our teachers to work with a new teacher in training. Now the district's going to be responsible for that. That's all forty thousand dollars. We think is going to be back to the board. Well, well, I, I'm pushing back. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think it's fair for the teachers or the state to do this. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, so we're still putting pieces together and all, but I don't find the number of things that on priority particularly. Um, you know, I think all in all we're okay. Um, you know, we've, we've, there's, there's some hits we took, but I think we'll, we'll be, we should man manage so long. Just to remind the board, I think when we go to city council and we say we need X amount, you may recall what we asked for. You may recall what we got. And we, and, and we go back and someone say, well, wait, you got a school in a year and you got six schools in distinction. Why do you need this money? You heard the people tonight. It is impacting the lives every day. The paras are helpful. Um, the programs can always run better. We, I get that. But there are extra hands that are very valuable, uh, PD-wise, uh, helping students at certain tiers. It's all falling in the classroom. And the classrooms are not getting smaller. They're getting larger. The number of students needing intervention has grown exponentially. You know, it's, it's like the perfect storm. So we go there and they say, well, you, why, why, how come you do well? Well, I think you gotta go and see what the teachers do and the hard work that they do in the classrooms. They may come here and talk about that, but they work, work very hard at it. And we appreciate that. And I think that message, when you go with you to the board, I think you need to communicate that with me. Because that really, we have larger classes, it's very burdensome in the class, and uh, the workload is becoming tremendous. And you know, right now, we're, we're, we cut 5.3 million and 5.4.4.1 Because we got $2 million from, from the city. So you tell me where we're gonna get that. And I said to Joe, my understanding it may be a rescission. They heard that as well. Because they've already figured out, I think, Michael, that perhaps the income that they're counting on may not be able to mitigate uh, going forward the amount of money they they put into the budget. We're having projections due, I think, the end of end of this month. Last year, yes. it was a, what was state, the percentage? Uh, last year, I cut a quarter of a million about December 23rd. What was the percentage? Uh, well, I don't, it was $250,000. It was out of the alliance grant. It was a cut ECS, which then hits the board's alliance fund. And uh, the legislators and the government protected the alliance district. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, from the decisions. Um, but, uh, you know, they're, they're giving us a heads up. So. That's all just to say that we need the resources. I think we've asked for what's fair, um, and we just need to really diligently see how we can get some more resources so that we can provide assistance and keep programs with the youngsters, like Deco and the rest of them. Because you know, the elementary is just as important the high school, uh, and we try to just distribute that money as fairly as we can. Uh, facilities update. We just had we just found the facilities group. Uh, at six o'clock, we are embarking on a uh, portable project for West Side. Um, it's, there's an inspect and draft. It will come back to the board for, for further action. Um, we're in conversation with the city about putting what we think to be six to eight portable classrooms up at, on the West Side campus uh, to enlarge that about 750, 725 students, depending on how many classrooms we put in there. Um, we think it's an economical solution. And bricks and mortar is always a better solution, but I mean, in the end, I think that it's a, it's a good way to go. It'll fit in pretty nicely on the backside of the campus. 
what's, what's the max that you think you can put up? We think we, we, six I know we've walked the property already. I haven't done a full site server architects on kind of stuff. We might be able to shoehorn two more back there. Um, we're gonna see, look, they will be able to be hoisted in by cranes. It's a pretty easy process actually to get them there. Um, so I think all in all, it's, it's, it's pretty doable for probably pretty economical. And programmatically, um, Bill, conversation we've had is simply expand both academies. Maintain the two academies. Maintain the two academies. Because we have it all organized, we have the curriculum organized. Because one time we thought, would it be beneficial to have a third academy? But we don't know. So if we can get eight, that'll be up to, you know, all the schools will be about, that'll be about 800, and then the the other two middle schools will be about 9, 950. Um, if, if we don't do nothing, they'll be up to 1150, 1200. It's problematic, I think. The other thing we talked about the facilities committee is to look at some long range work that we're doing. Yeah, but we all, and also ACE. Yes, yeah, so and the overcrowding. Uh, we are waiting to study on ACE and the ruling from uh, Fuller and D'Angelo, the architecture from the city hired to review ACE, so that is uh, forthcoming. Probably by the next meeting or something like that. Um, we'll get an update there. Elementary schools are stretched, you know, Secret, South Street, Ellsworth, the schools that you kind of already know um, are very, very full and out of space and really out of usual space for people to take. I mean, old principals out of class, out of their offices and everything else. So I think there's, you know, any more growth there really could be very problematic. Mr. Ferguson, this question. Oh, thank you. So just to clarify, six to eight portables, is that six classrooms? Two classrooms in a portable like shelf, so 12 classrooms. No, six, six classrooms. Six classrooms. Okay. And when, if we were to move according to our target dates, when would that be? I would like them online for September. I think, I think if we move quick enough, we can get through and break ground right after the thaw. I mean, they, they really, I mean, we have literally just shelf the rock and we have those done in you know, two and a half months and we put them in directly before the snow ground. Um, so they can go pretty fast. I mean, if, you know, sound tube work can be done quickly without disturbing the students. And then once summertime came, we just place them right over top of the school and drop them in place. So. Yeah, I'd like to have the approval process so we do the lottery. We know what we're accepting. Yeah, I mean, the good news for the board with the lottery, you'll just take more students. I mean, so at least from the lottery standpoint, it's just easy to just hold up another 25 or 50 seats. So it's, it's a pretty easy process from that perspective. Any other questions on that? So that's going to be a, a, across the board phase then through all three grades? You know, I, I don't know, I think we should talk about it and talk with Frank and his staff and see that you could open up. I don't know how many students would like to come for eighth grade. After. Yeah, that's what that's yeah, what I'm saying. You know, I mean, if you're not, if you're putting all the classrooms in, are we going to do some empty and Probably bring well, in six? We did before we did six, seven, and eight. Yeah. Yeah. You might be able to do six, seven if you have enough staff and wise. <laughs> right. But, you know, we should talk about see how the lottery goes. Yep. And if it's there and they want to go and, and there's enough students and we have the staffing to go, um, and I put that in the parking lot, staffing, because we're opening up the high school, <laughs> you know, right. that's another issue that we have to look at. So we'll see what happens. And there's no bathroom issues and that sort of thing? No, we're, of the location. we're close enough right into the cafeteria. There's a set there. Um, I think we're okay. We'll have to review a little more, but I think we're, we're good. There'll be lockers built into the, um, the new wing. Because obviously there's only 600 lockers in the current building, so I have to add lockers in those hallways in the portals. But I think it's all, I think for the most part, it's doable. We've kind of walked the property, so that's fine. Transportation? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, I think at our last meeting, I think I sort of talked about the overcrowding. And uh, as I listen to, we keep adding portables. At some point, I might not be sitting here a couple five years from now. We just, we just can't keep expanding the portable. So I guess my question would be, because some of the school, some of the areas around here are getting funding for new schools. So how do we approach that to see what type of funding we get? Because eventually the portables are going to run out. And I think that we need to start looking at how do we go about getting funding to really get what we really need. Now, don't get me wrong, but the portal is going to fix this the problem for a couple of years. But going, you know, five, ten years from now, we're going to have to sustain something more than a portal. I had the finance, I was finance, so it's going to be about that strategically. So short-term <coughs> modules, long-term, we're going to have to look at. 
Um, we're going to have to ver we, we have to verify it. It's <coughs> always the paper this past weekend talked about 20 years out and yeah. growing. So I think Denver is going to keep growing mm -hmm. and then put together uh, you know a study group and and then make recommendations. That's what we'd have to do. But the we thought we'd start with the middle school and, and then the next thing you have we have to talk about is ACE. Okay, that's going to come before us. And then you know we want to do bricks and mortars down the road. The sense I got from the facilities committee is that, as you said, what are we doing down the road? And that's the conversation we have to have. Uh, say elementary school or expanded K, whatever it is, but we have to look at that. Transportation. Transportation quickly um, back to the overcrowding and the overcrowded buses. And I unfortunately have to report to the board that I have to have two full size buses and a mini. Uh, the minis for preschool. Um, we see some thought challenges our preschool program as far as numbers. You know, they are they are up as you know that's required for special education for services. Uh, full size buses, particularly on the west side of town, exit two. Uh, we originally had one bus. Now this is for high school particularly. Uh, so a lot of overcrowding there. Um, we're, and even with those buses added, we're still seeing challenges about arrival times, parking times, and they, they really are pushing the fleet as far as they can. And I, it's easy to say, you know, if we take out a bus, no, there's no, you know, we really need to, unfortunately, and many, um, there's really no way. We've, we've looked at a large five times over. One of the things we're looking at, which is part of the future plan, is our bell schedules and our bell times. Um, right now, as, as we know, we did that study two years over transportation. We looked at a modified bell, the idea of moving west side up and kind of juggling the tiers around. Um, I am going to first take a second look. Um, I think the ability to try to get the elementary schools to either one tier or close to one tier is where the move need to be to get to a three tier system. Because the bus company doesn't have enough time in between. Right now, your you know, difference between high school and middle school is about 20 to 25 minutes. And to get vehicles in place to do those second runs, you have a lot in your four tiered system, you have a lot of buses going to hit two of the four tiers. Because not enough time to get in position to hit those next schools. Um, so I think that's a challenge. So STA, we're going to work with them. They have an outside consultant, actually, the name of someone else as well. Um, we'll bring that back to the board. You know, fairly short time. We see it's doable if we can do something. Um, I think we'll make more efficient in the system, at least slow the growth of buses. I mean, when Mark did our study two years ago, he said to me, if you don't make a change, you'll continue to add. And we did a study, we had 77. We have 82. Um, so just, and, and there's growth as part of it, too. But I mean, the ability to get to a three-tiered system would be, is really what we need to be. Will we get there? I don't know. It's a lot of buses to put in the elements you run. You're talking about 80 something total. We might not be able to get there, but look at some modification, I think, so at least we're going to explore. <laughs> what, what is the bus, me, what is the bus uh, run the district? East 60, County Avenue? 60,000. 60,000. Each bus? Each bus, yeah. Well, we had those in the budget last year. And I go back to what I said a few minutes ago. When we had to reduce the $3.5 million, we said we're just going to run the buses longer, and they're not 45 minutes, not there an hour. There's no limitation, and they're going to be crowded, and that's what we wound up doing. But at this point, it's a safety issue. Yeah, I mean, you there's, you can't there's do 72 that. seats, and you got 80 kids on a bus. This is the kind involved. of thing that we're getting hit with. Um, so, how, so <coughs> by reducing the, the elementary from two tiers to one tier, how many how many buses are you? We would, to, to get to a, a true three tier, the elementary schools need roughly about 82 some odd buses. The question is, you've got your, your um, parochial schools you service too. So right. we have to see how we can weave those in. I mean, it's complicated, and again, I don't want to, you know, get out where we're going to resell the elementary times. I think we can get to something that's manageable, but we need to at least take a look again and see. I can't move, the goal I directed the guy on the phone, the consultant, High school has to stay in one tier, all the middle schools have to stay together. I mean, if you remember what Mark's original, Mark Walsh did the study, West Side got moved up to a high school. We had elementary kids who were starting too early, so I, mean, I kind of gave them a little more precise on things we couldn't change. So we'll see if they come back with them. I mean, again, it's gotta, you gotta turn over to rock. I mean, there's just no, and to Dr. Sal's point, those new buses now roll into next year's bus. So again, we begin to build next year's challenges as we're sitting here. So it's. No. We're not looking to do that this year. No. I mean, we're going to do the study. Okay. What I'd like to do is, is a dry run if we do do that, uh, maybe towards the end of the year, maybe a few days with the parent cooperation to see if it works. Yeah. 
because if it doesn't work, we stop. Well, you've added you've added two. All two. Yeah. So we're in there already. And, yeah. we, and you think we can survive this year with no with? Oh, we have to add any more than that. No, we're 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 good with that. Well, two plus the plus the, the mini. mini, plus the mini, plus the mini. Yeah. But the three tier would be for next year. Right. It'll make this much more efficient. The other thing it'll do for us when we have time for teachers in terms of dismissals, we have these uneven times, and it really is really creates havoc. It'll it'll probably put that better in line as well, so that'll be helpful to us. Um, and I think the bus company said they have someone that would look at it they as do. well. They, they, they have, have someone. I have a proposal from a person, and they also have another person who actually did, did a lot of grinding support. I mean, obviously, these are long discussions to have, and changing bell times this is a big issue for the board. It's nothing that we're going to enter into quickly or lightly. Yeah. Um, so, but this is double deckers from England. Yeah, double deckers would work, right? And classrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> finance. Joe, the the excess capacity, the the eighty students, the those that are they standing or are they squeezing into this? Yeah. No, no. STA has there there are spare vehicles on the property. We have by contract. There's eight extra vehicles in our fleet. So what SDA does, if they have an overload, they can't leave kids without a seat. So they quickly will put a secondary bus on a run. Like we, we'll run like a bus 80A and 80B. So literally they run in tandem on those runs because you can't, you safety issue, you can't have So it. nobody is staying in No, the no, no, we quickly deal with that. And that, that's, so they'll do that. They don't charge us for that. Like we won't pay for these sure. buses till November. That's just what they do, um, which is why they're pretty good partners yeah. so far. Thanks. Um, lastly, I just have one thing. I'm sorry to take the time. And starting Mark Walsh in the study, we had a conversation on bus bids. And as the board knows, we did a no bid with STI. And I said to Mark, as he runs a lot of bids for schools, Rich goes out to bid, Trumbull is. I said, where are schools falling? The board did 3.5% for five years. Mark said to me, we're hopeful that you don't see a double digit number in year one. Or so 9 or 10% year one. So I mean, the idea is proven that the board did the action they did and enroll that contract out for at three and a half or five years because I think about ten percent increase in year one on a new fleet. So just want to kind of relay that. I think it's well worth the endeavor that we went down that road. So, yeah. Finance, you have a software. Yeah, I have software. Oh um, conversation with the city um, through actually legislative action there is any new regulations the idea that if the board of education is to enter into or pursue new fiscal software they have to at least engage with their city counterparts on the idea of partnering for at least the same software. Oddly enough, we had these conversations with the city a couple months ago. We are at least exploring options on a same software product, not combined in the sense of where we're going to intermingle. They will still be separate for education and city offices and HR, all those pieces. But we are at least exploring the option of cost saving person the same software. The court has an older product, about 10, 11 years old, at least. I think there's a lot of efficiency to gain by switching. Um, the city has said they will they will partner and pay. So I mean, I, I kind of new new starts part of a million dollars at least. Um, so to say that I can just go out of my own is would be an understatement. Uh, the other thing, new question. Uh, you heard the young lady about the Edith High School. Do you remember we put the new furnaces in, so it's the furnace is not the problem. The problem is that they're getting they're getting steam leaks. Yeah. You think that. The valves are older, the pressure is greater, and it's, they'll fix one and suddenly another one will pop up. And they got to turn the furnace off to repair, which is causing the problem. Yeah, uh, they did get all of them today, I understand. We have two that still have issues that are breaks in the floor. When the steam pipe broke, it actually made a, um, there's some asbestos tile around two of these pipes, so we've got to do what we think could be a, not a, it could be a, what's called a glove bag abatement or a small abatement of tile. Um, Rich and I were actually up there today walking. There's two locations that have to get dealt with. Um, city's already involved. We're going to try to engage a contractor Friday, Saturday to get the work done. Um, to the best of the city's cost on ours. Um, but yeah, the, the city's more important than that. I said 40, 50 years old on the ride. Anything else? No discussion. Information? Uh, to just let you know, we're, the graduation requirements are set up. I will be coming to you. We'll do some modifications on, on the regulations to meet the uh, the number that we have to. Uh, there is some legislation in the new uh, implement a bill where uh, the board may have to do some policy up work. But as soon as I get something concrete, I'll know better about that. But other than that, I don't have anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
the health services field trip protocol that shouldn't go to the policy? Oh, well, it was a regulation, just okay. all it was, including following up. We just want to make sure that was in there. Um, that we're that in there it says parenthetically when you go on the field trip it includes following the health services field trip protocol. Okay. Which is again, you know, we just want to make sure people know that. Okay. Just, just need it, so that's okay. Um, Bill, you want anything on five? Um, on that the, uh, <coughs> health services, we met with the CYPD on Monday and we repeated it with them as well. So the PD on five? Um, you have uh, in your package. You have all of the sessions you'll see. It's, it's, we're focusing very tightly on data on instructional enhancement. There's also a piece in there that came out of Sandy Hook. We want to make sure that we're balancing the social and emotional needs of kids with the academic needs. Um, the feedback on the, the sessions was very, very positive. We are now doing a survey every time we do a session that's digitally aggregated, and then at the instructional development team meeting, we look at the results from that. And in an extraordinarily positive tech respect, I'm like it. Um, very positive. So um, we just keep monitoring the sessions. The other piece with this is tomorrow we have an administrative council meeting. We've turned those into administrative learning sessions. And tomorrow is the second part of our data wise session. And then we'll follow that up with a SPED session. We have an ELL session coming up. We have a parent engagement session coming up. So we're booked throughout the year with the new protocol and so far. So good. Bill, on the presenters, a lot of these are on staff that are doing it, right? The majority of them are, yes. So, yeah. it, 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 which really is a very nice piece because they, they own all the issues that they're, everybody's struggling with at the classroom level. So there's a really nice reality factor there as opposed to somebody coming in talking about something in the best of all worlds, which is not what we're doing right now. Okay, so board chair, president court, nothing. I just want to say, Congratulations to the newly elected board members that will start December 1st. Rachel Chalesky, who's here. And I saw Amy before. Amy Spolino's back there. Um, uh, Mr. Foreman Santos will continue on, and Mr. Janelle will continue on. So, congratulations, guys. And that's it from, uh, from my end. Um, yeah. Oh, Ms. Oh, I apologize. It's not all I am. Sorry. <laughs> Yes. Excuse me. Uh, I wasn't paying attention when we accept the minutes. Can we go back to exhibit uh, 126? I was uh, no the absent at that uh, meeting, and I was present at that meeting. So could we have a correction on that, please? Which one? Exhibit 126. Okay. Okay. Can we have a correction on that?